Hi everyone, it's Lillian Epp. Welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. Today I am doing a thrifted jar and bottle makeover for some home decor that I am in need for spring. These little jars here I got at the thrift store. They were 99 cents each. And at first I thought, oh, they're a little expensive for such a small little bottle. But you know what? I grabbed them because they're just very unique, very different. You normally don't find things like this. So I snatched them up and I'm glad I did. Now the colors were not my particular style. If someone's decor would have been, you know, with that green and the multicolor, I think it would have been great. Uh, just for me, it didn't it didn't go with my style. So I decided to paint them with white chalk paint from Rust-Oleum in their linen white. And I'm going to do two coats on them using my chippy brush. Now, three of them had the little cork top. Um, I did remove them to, to paint and I will replace two of them when I'm done. Um, and you'll see that here in a minute. I do want to take a minute and let you know about Sarah from Pajama Crafts. Her and I are collaborating on this fun video. And I want you guys to take a minute after you're done watching this video and go on my description box and check out her channel. She's so creative. She has such cute style. She has a lot of like farmhouse Dollar Tree projects. And I think you really, really would enjoy it. So check her channel out down below. All right, so I am all done with my first projects. I'm just adding some colorful flowers and look how cute these little jars look. Like I said earlier, I replaced the cork top on two of them because I just thought it was just maybe too much for flowers on all of them. But I can certainly change that up, maybe add some greenery on all four on future decor. Alright guys, so for my second project, this was my problem child project. <laughs> Alright, so these little milk jugs or jars I got off of Marketplace and the lady was selling like 12 of them for $10 and I loved that they were all the same color. They all brought the little top for them and in white and it was just so cute. Now I did didn't want to keep all of them on the same kind of style with the clear glass. So I grabbed these here and I decided to um, add some stripes. So I'm using painter's tape and I'm going to tape and I'm just eyeing it out. Okay, I'm not measuring. I don't need this to be perfect. but So I am uh, just eyeing out, making sure that at eye level they look pretty leveled on the bottom. And I'm going to be using three different types of colors. Now, very unusual for me because normally, like, like you know, I usually go with white. Now, one of them is going to be white, as you see here. The other two are going to be a little brighter colors. So I am going to add two coats per stripe um, using, again, the different colors. These are all, the first one was the rust in the linen white chalk paint. This is by Bear in their um, Mossy Bench, I believe it is. Beautiful color. If you guys are looking for like a teal, greenish, grayish color, this is a really good one. I'll have it linked down below. And it actually um, stuck, or I guess, or like really, really grabbed onto the surface of the bottle really well. Now, this one here is a different story. <laughs> this one was, one, it was very translucent. And, um, which was okay. I, I still added a couple coats and it was fine, but it gave me some trouble. You'll see what I'm talking about. So now I'm just removing the tape. Now, normally I wouldn't go all the way like showing you how to remove tape because you know how to remove tape, but I wanted to show you that it, it actually had quite a bit of bleed through. Um, I was very disappointed because I thought I, you know, taped it well, but nonetheless, I, I was able to fix it. And I'll show you how I did that, but I wanted to show you that it actually happened with all three paints. So it wasn't just um, the bear or the chalk paint. It was with actually all three. So I want to say it's because of the surface of the bottle, maybe the way it was curved. Maybe I didn't rub the tape 
too much or too, you know, hard on the surface. So that's the story on that. Look how bad that is. So I did fix it by just taking my nail, which is probably not like the most technical thing to do, but I just felt like I had a lot more control. At first I thought, oh, maybe I'll use a cotton swab and wet it a little bit. It would have been too much. With the nail, it scraped really well and I try to keep it as straight as possible. And it looked it looked fine, um, in my opinion. And I did that with all three. All right, so now I'm adding uh, another tape. So I cut my tape into half so it's a little thinner. And I'm going to add another stripe, a thinner stripe, on top of this larger one that I did just now. So I'm using the tape and here I thought I was just going to put it there but no I was wrong so I removed it and again I'm just eyeing out a smaller stripe and taping it. Now I'm making sure that I firmly firmly press on the tape to avoid any bleed through. So I did that with all of them and then I added the other stripe doing two coats as well. And I'm showing you this one because there you see that it chipped already. Now I did not have this problem with the Rustoleum or the Bear. Unfortunately, I did have a problem with the Valspar. Now it may have been that this is one of their lower end, I believe, but I thought it was good because it says Ultra. <laughs> Maybe it's just the surface. Maybe it was just the surface of the bottle that made it very difficult. And I did the same technique which is not a difficult technique, on all three, which is basically, you know, paint and then smooth it out. Um, look how bad this is, guys. When I removed the tape, it was peeling off like in chunks. Now, I, I was disappointed. I was frustrated, to say the least. But look, <laughs> I fixed it the best I could. I didn't seal them or anything because I want to have the option to remove the stripe with some water if I needed to or wanted to, but I think they look cute from far, <laughs> especially the yellow one. The white one and the teal one actually came out pretty good. The yellow one needed some work, so I just turned it to the side that looked the best, um, but it was a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie. I was very frustrated, but in the end, I think they look super cute. I learned a lot, and that's what happens when you DIY. You have to be willing to make these mistakes and just learn from them, so. All right, so moving on. The next project I am working on is with mason jars. I've collected several mason jars through the months and I grabbed these three that are different heights, but they all have the ball um, logo on them. So I thought it was really cute. And I'm then gonna take three different Rust-Oleum chalk paint in three different colors. This one here is the Serenity Blue and I'm going to do the small one with it. Uh, and I'm going to show you, I'm not going to show you the two coats that I do, but I do want to show you how each one come on. I, I'm a fan of rust -Oleum. I think for how economic they are, you can find them at the hardware store. They have beautiful coverage. Guys, look how beautiful coverage this is. And this is again on glass, which normally it would be very slick surface. Um, that's why I wanted to show you like all three as I'm doing the first coat so you can see. Um, and they have also several colors. Now, their color variety are very limited in their chalk paint. They do have milk paint that you can buy as well, but that is a lot more sheer. Um, but I am a fan of the chalk paint, and I have painted furniture, a lot of furniture with it, and it does really well with it. It's not a sponsored video or anything like that. I just tell you I'm a fan because it really does a good job. 
This is their blush pink and it's beautiful. I just recently did an accent table with it and it came out super cute and that little table sold within minutes literally from um, posting it on sale on marketplace and again just showing you how beautiful that coverage and yes i forgot to take the price tag out um, how beautiful the coverage is And then the last jar, which is the largest one, I am using the Linen White Tone, which is one that I use almost in every project. I really like it. And okay, so now that it is fully dry, all two coats, I am now going to be wet distressing. I love wet distressing, especially when it's on glass on a sleek surface like this. And look how beautiful those details pop when you distress them. Now, I know the distress look is not for everyone. But if you, if you do like it, I think it's probably because of the same way that I like it. One, I just like that rustic kind of distress look. But I just love how details pop when you distress them. And I could have used sandpaper, but... On this slick surface, glass surface, I think it's best to use just wet distress. I just use a damp rag. It doesn't have to be soaking wet. Just damp is sufficient. And I'm just focusing on the details. All right, so now I'm just adding some jute twine on the top um, just to add a little cute little detail. And I'm going to do the same thing on all of them. Nothing major, just rolling around three times and then doing a simple knot in the front. Okay, right, so now I'm just adding the final touches. I decided to add a votive candle to the front one because it was small enough and I thought it was just cute. And then I added some florals that I got on Amazon. And look how beautiful this, this is my favorite. <laughs> it just looks beautiful. The three colors complement each other very well. It just dressed beautifully. And those flowers and the candle just finished it up. All right, guys, so this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have not subscribed yet to my channel, I invite you to do so. And don't forget to check out Sarah's channel down below in the description box. Have a blessed day.